Hello, everyone. I'm Ronnie. Hi, and I'm Jenny, and we are... Who are we? The Heart and Soul Sisters. Yes, we are. <laughs> and so Good we're... Good to see you. You too. You too. <laughs> um, so we are coming to the last couple of episodes for our second season, and one of the things we wanted to do as we were talking about people we love is to talk about places we love. And yes. from the standpoint of nourishing us spiritually right finding um uh information and and relationships that feed us and yeah. um so we're going to talk today about kripalu uh yoga retreat center in uh, massachusetts and um omega in institute in rhinebeck new york mm -hmm. and i um i've never really been one to to take like yoga classes i think i talked about that when we talked about yoga last season i mostly have been self-taught um but I did for a brief period of time go to a place where I took um, yoga, maybe for a year or so. I would go once a week. A friend of mine just really loved it and, and kind of uh, got me going. And when I was there, I heard about Kripalu in Massachusetts. And um, uh, some of the students that were in, in that, that uh, studio, right, in, in that um, space had taken a weekend to go along with one or two of the instructors there. And I remember hearing them talk about it. And this would have been, wow, probably back in, I'm trying to think, 2002, maybe. So it was quite a while back. So it was kind of on my radar. And then somehow I started getting their catalogs. And I would look at the programming and say, oh, that looks kind of cool. That looks kind of cool. But I, and it's only, um, I'm in upstate New York, so it's only about uh, two hours and 15 minutes from my house. So it's not far at all. And I kept thinking, well, someday I'll go there, someday I'll check it out. And so I would see these, see the catalogs come in the mail and look at them. And finally, one time, um, Deepak Chopra um, was coming. And it's like, oh, I would really love to see him. That was uh, 2013, summer of 2013. So that was the first time I went. And it was, it was super cool. It was just really cool being um, with other like-minded people. There were yoga classes multiple times a day. It's, mm -hmm. it's as, you know, um, it's up on a hill. It's an old monastery up on the hill. Um, Beautiful. It's, it's got, you kind of cross the, cross the road there by the campus and go down a little path and there's, there's a lakefront that they have so you can swim and paddleboard and do all those things. And it's just a lovely, lovely spot in the lake and the mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the facility itself is up on a hill, so you can see the lake, like, from the dining spaces and from a lot of the rooms, the accommodations. And it just was, it was just really neat to meet so many like-minded people, right? To be in that space with the energy of um, trying to live a, a life that's defined by the values of yoga, right? Non-harming and compassion, including self-compassion and... Um, I just, I just fell in love with it. Um, it wasn't long. Yeah, you were I, so psyched. <laughs> it wasn't long before I started calling it the mothership, you know, uh -huh. and um, it, it was, it was fantastic. It was just fantastic. But even before I went there, I think in 2010, right, you mm -hmm. discovered Omega. Omega. So how, how did yeah. you, how did you find Omega? So I was, uh, I, we had been reading Dr. Brian Weiss books mm -hmm. and I, I was, I went on his, I think it was his website and saw that he was going to be giving a week long retreat mm. at the Omega Institute. And I was like, Oh, I gotta go to this. I just have to go to this. I'd never been to anything like that before. And, and just looking at the, the description of the Omega Institute, it's, you know, they're their whole philosophy, kind of that same thing of, you know, um, working with the environment and um, sustainable living and, and you know, they, how they have their own gardens for growing the food that they, you know, much of the food they serve in the cafeteria and just the whole thing. It's like right. a, it's like a, a, a step up 
camp for adults, yeah. <laughs> you know, like a summer <laughs> camp thing. It, it was just, I, I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. So I, you, I wanted you to go with me so much, but it just wasn't the timing. You, you well, I was yeah, so, you couldn't go. I was so envious that you were going and I, you know, I can't, <laughs> in the week I got classes to teach. So, yeah. so yeah. So yeah. So it was, it was late spring, I think. Yeah. When I went and oh, was, I fell in love with a place similar, um, similar grounds in the in the in the hills back in the hills you know uh in Rhinebeck New York and just just a beautiful setting and the the week was wonderful um met just same kind of thing as as um Kripalu just met so many people from different walks of life from all over the world really I met people Mm -hmm. from England and Ireland and Scotland and uh, somebody from Italy um, and just other places that came because they wanted to be at this seminar because I think Dr. Weiss wasn't at that time or, and still doesn't do doesn't like do many seminars very much, yeah. but not very many. So it was just a wonderful experience and, and being able to talk to all these different people was, and and people sharing their stories and their, their heal. Many of them were very, very open people sharing their um their paths of, of searching for healing. We're all searching for that. I think many of us, um, right. That, that, um, want to understand, want to grow, want to evolve, want to learn as much as we can. Um, and many of them were, were healers and and helpers and, um, spiritualists. And and it was really just, and, and sharing their gifts. And that's where I, um, had experiences with, different um a woman from china who who did energy healing and was and they were all offering during the breaks they were all offering in the in the main community center where we were having our meetings they um dr y said feel free to use this space you know um for practicing and for you know any 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 healing modalities that you feel called to do so we were, I, there were people performing Reiki there and that was before oh. you and I, you know, went for our Reiki training. Right. So I had people that, that just would, you know, that I was sitting there and we'd start talking and, uh, and they offered to do a Reiki session, you know, for free, you know, just yeah. to, just for the experience. So it was just met some just amazing people and fell in love with the place. Didn't want to leave at the end of the week. It was so right. just so peaceful and just such a beautiful experience. So yeah, after that week, I was like, oh, Ronnie, we have to go here. So we did. We found some some other uh, retreats. And actually, you, a few years down the road, we you brought went us to back. Danielle, the Danielle. Yeah, we went to Danielle McKinnon's Animal Communication Weekend, mm-hmm. uh, kind of an introduction to intuitive work right? with right. people and with animals. And it was just, uh, that was amazing. That yeah. kind of started this whole new path for us to get yes really. yes um, having gone to those two places has really dramatically changed the trajectory of our lives um it's i know true. that yeah that that going to kripalu brought some new practices for me or at least um i would say uh, changed or reframed um my practices or altered some of what i was doing so uh you know me I, i've been practicing yoga for a long time because I, as I've said for years, I have zero natural flexibility, like bending, mm-hmm. bend over and touch your toes. I can't even touch my knees. Like it was that, I was that tight, that stiff. And so when I started practicing yoga and in my early twenties, I, I knew if I didn't start doing something, I would be a crippled woman well before my time. It was, I would just be old and, and unable to move. And so that's when I got the book and taught myself the, or mom gave me a book and I taught myself the postures. Um, but I would typically do them late in the day, like right before bedtime, because if I tried to get up in the morning and, you know, position my body in the various postures, it would, I just felt so stiff. I felt like the tin man without the oil can, you know, and it was demoralizing. <laughs> Here I'm 22, yeah. 23 years old, and I'm so stiff and immobile. And so that's what I did for years, years and years and years. And when mm-hmm. I went to Kripalu, so the first time I went, I would have been would have been, um, 40, no, 50. Is that right? That must be right. Yeah. Close, close to 50. Um, and so they have yoga classes throughout the day. They have them first thing in the morning at six 30. They have a yoga dance at lunchtime. 
and then they have sort of yoga in the afternoon because the classes go from like 8.30 to 11.30 or 9 to 12 and you break for lunch for an hour, hour and a half and you come back for a few more hours and then there's possibilities of yoga classes after that and they have evening programs and oh, yeah. but it just seemed like a really good thing to get up in the morning and start with gentle yoga right they put gentle mm-hmm. yoga in their biggest space because that's yes. what people gravitate <laughs> toward at 6 30 in the morning and I thought oh first thing I just don't know how I'm going to do this but I did and so I was there for like a weekend I think the first time I went so I was there two mornings got up two mornings and did the gentle yoga at 6 30 it's like you know what? I feel really good mm-hmm. after moving this way first thing in the morning. And so it completely shifted my life. Mm-hmm. I got to the point, and, and actually, as I've talked about when we talked about meditation last season, Deepak Chopra is the one who got me back on trying meditation again because he gave so many easy ways. Like it's just, it's just finding a way that works for you. And he gave so many ideas and so many opportunities to try things out. Um, so anyhow, so so I got after just that one time I completely changed my morning I get up I practice my meditation and yoga I do a little bit of you know walking or some other cardio workout and then my day right I take that time for myself right off the top and that's made such a difference in my life and so one of the great things about going to a place like that is it can get you in uh, it, it can offer you some opportunities or some options and maybe change the rhythm of your life even just you know, the mm-hmm. way you start your day is so crucial. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I love about Kripalu is they have silent breakfast. So yes. you just, you go in and there is no talking. You go through the line, you take your food, you sit down. Um, you can find a place all by yourself. You can sit with someone else. You can make, you know, eye contact and smile. And then you eat in silence. And it's a way to really be very mindful about what you're eating. Yes. If you're not mm-hmm. engaged in conversation or looking at a screen or, you know, those kinds of things that would distract you, I find I experience the food more fully. I eat less, mm-hmm. definitely less, because I'm paying attention to it. I, I enjoy the flavor of it more. Um, it's just, mm-hmm. it's just, it's amazing what places like that can do in terms of helping you think about your life and your, your daily routine and, and right. how might you um, make your uh, make the things you do every day a little more peaceful or maybe more joyful or whatever? It's just, it just represents a, a different approach um, to how many of us go through our day where we're just like, you know, zag- zipping and zapping from one place to the next and, mm-hmm. and not really slowing down to think about what we're doing or how we're doing it. Yeah, I also love the thing at Kripalu where it's a, it's a, cell phone free zone yes although people <laughs> like push no the boundaries they, they yeah, do yeah but but if you think about it you know you're you're really encouraged to unplug yeah totally mm-hmm. you know and just just be present how how difficult is it for us to really be present for more than like two seconds you know i mean i think most of us are constantly you know that monkey brain we've talked about before are constantly leapfrogging from one thing to another and you know our electronic devices don't help right um so yeah it's really it's just like when we go to camp you know we have our family reunion Mm -hmm. and you there's no tv and there you know for the first number of years there was no cell phone service either really yeah and or wi-fi or anything else so it it would it would take me a full easily 24 hours to just you know go from being you know, that, that constant <laughs> feeling like you're vibrating like you got to be doing something to just being able to to sit and watch the water to yes. watch the trees sway in the wind and just enjoy being present in the moment that that's a huge shift energetically yeah. yes you know for a yes, lot of yes. us yes. that run 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 go 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 do 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 get the list done you know check it off the list every day you know right and right and so that's what places like the Omega Institute and Krupalu are just so crucial in helping us to, I think, really focus on being present in our body. And that's what the, I mean, the yoga, you know, four or five times a day helps us to do too, of course. And right. I, I loved that about it. I loved starting my day with a gentle yoga and then ending my day with some of those um, amazing, and you can try different classes, which was really fun, Yeah, you know 
uh, to see what, right. what do a vinyasa, you know, what you really like. Yeah. Yeah. Do yoga nidra, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they have different, this face amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no. Just, just amazing. Just go yeah. ahead. I was going to say there's so many different spaces too. Like there are four floors. Well, there are five really with the basement. The basement's got the, the um, jacuzzi and the locker room and the sauna, you know, the places where you can oh, kind yeah. of lounge. Right. But there's four floors and like the fourth floor has a, a quiet meditation room that looks out on the lake. The main lobby's got like a lounge with couches and comfortable chairs and people will just be crashed on a couch. You know, I mean, it's, it's that comfortable of a place. And I just, I just love that about it. I love the vibe about it. Um, yeah. I, I, Oh, and they and, have their little tea shop for, and coffee shop for yeah, those. Yes, so little tea and coffee shop. Need to get a little coffee <laughs> fix. Need to get a little zhuzh. Fix. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's not. It's. I mean, it's, it's beautifully. Um, the food is all beautiful. It's. It's. It's the. I never remember all six. It's they. They do, according to uh, yoga practice, Ayurvedic um, philosophy. You need six tastes. So it's sweet, sour, bitter, pungent, Savory. stringent, and there's one other. I don't think is savory, savory is, but no. I don't think it's savory. There's something else. Um, acidic, maybe. No, but I think stringent is acidic. Anyway, look it something up like if you that. care. <laughs> <laughs> but because but because you get, because it's very colorful, um, it's very heavy vegetarian. There's a vegetarian line. There's a vegan space. There's also, they all do also do some chicken and fish. Um, but m most of the stuff is vegetarian. But because it's, they're attuned to all those flavors, and the textures and the colors, um, it's just beautiful and, and satisfying. It's just a very different eating experience, you know? And like I said, mm -hmm. I just find I eat so much less because I don't need to. I'm not just shoveling it in. I'm well, it's enjoying nutrient, it. Nutrient-dense nutrient -dense, nutrient yes. dense food. Just um, Right, right. Yeah, I, it, it's, yeah, kudos to the chef at Kripalo. He's, Absolutely. He's, and I can't believe I can't remember his name. Okay, so you did a class with him once, didn't you? I did. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yes. I'm like, I'm blanking, but he, yeah, I, I went to one of his, he, he offers demonstrations, different demonstrations, cooking yeah, yeah, classes and gives out recipes that, you know, to take home, um, yeah. in the evenings, you know, often. And he's, he's got such a great personality and oh my gosh, he's an amazing chef and he's been at Kripalu for quite some time now. Yeah. Um, yeah. but anyway, he's marvelous. So yeah. Yeah. It's just, so it's just a treat. I mean, all the way around it's a it treat. Is. And, uh, so, so you and I have gone together. I brought my daughter a couple of different times. We kind of taken turns choosing programs to go to. And then one time I was going to, um, uh, hands of healing, uh, class over a, a Labor Day weekend. I was talking to you about it. I was visiting you and one of your daughters was there and something said to me, take her with you. And so I just, I went to see, first of all, if I could get a flight cause it was kind of short notice. Um, for her. And then I offered her the opportunity and she came and I remember it was just, it was so much fun because, um, she did the same program with me and I think she felt like she found her people, you know, like she felt very, um, accepted by them. And she was, she was kind of at that young adult stage where she's kind of transitioning from being an adolescent to a young adult. And, and I think that, that those kinds of experiences for people, particularly if people have felt like, a maverick. Uh, uh, yeah, like, or, or people don't get me, right? You know you're an empath or you're a sensitive person and people have been telling you all your life you're too sensitive or, you know, communicating to you that there's something wrong with you. And then to be around people for whom that is their way of being also, that can be transformative. Um, it's just, it's, I, I can't, uh, I feel like I can't overstate how empowering that can be, particularly for folks who just have not had anyone affirm that being spiritual, being sensitive, being empathic, being intuitive is okay. Right? That Absolutely. doesn't make you weird. Um, that makes you wonderful. No, that's who you are. That's who yeah. you are. Yeah. And, and you know, we're we're we all come into this life with different personalities and and gifts and inclinations and. We're meant to be here for a reason, we're, we're though, and one isn't better than the other, and so. But I think I think people who are highly sensitive, or or highly have high emotional intelligence, tend to be um, sometimes targets, maybe for yeah. for less sensitive people or or narcissists we've talked about before, or yeah. and, and so you tend you can tend to be a doormat 
for others. And that doesn't mean that you're less than anyone else. It just means you need to work on learning really healthy boundaries. You yeah, know? right. And, and, um, and feeling empowered and that's what places about like this. Are. Yeah, feeling yeah. empowered about who you are. And that's how places like Kripalu and the Omega Institute, I think, are just such a gift because... I think it, it's a their their magnet for highly intuitive empathic people um, who just want to love the world and make the world a better place, you know, and yeah, uh, in in their own way, and and so you have that support there. That's really important. Yeah, it's and, and, and many it's of the people of, that we've met in those classes, you know, we've we've kept in touch with. You know, that's true. It's, it's a great it's a great source of of connection, which is important. Or even just, um, just you, you can even just be there to meet somebody's needs at a particular time, right? I mean, mm-hmm. my sure. best example of that was I did a yin yoga weekend with the two women who were my teachers for my yoga teacher training. And I was so excited to go back and have, a, have some more time with them. And in that session, um, my, a young woman sat next to me. She was probably half my age, and she, we, we paired up to... Like you share a little bit about yourselves at the beginning, kind of get to know you that first evening that you're there for a weekend session. And she um, told me that she had divorced. She had a lot happen to her in the last like nine to 12 months. She had divorced. She had remarried. She had become pregnant and she had miscarried. And she was just kind of fresh off the miscarriage and kind of came to follow to try to rejuvenate and, you know, recharge and, and just take care of herself. And, and, um, and I felt, you know, I, I, I empathized with her because I miscarried twice after my daughter was born, as you know. And the second one was really hard for me. The first one I was able to be philosophical about and say, okay, it's not the right time. The second one was really hard. Um, I felt like I was being punished, that God was telling me I wasn't a good enough mother, so I didn't deserve any more children. And um, late in, like, the second day, we were doing this meditation and all those feelings came up for me again. Like I kind of thought I had really processed them and gotten over them. And, um, and I, was, it was re- I was upset. I was emotional. And as we were coming out of the meditation, they said, find somebody to share with. And I knew I had to talk to this woman next to me. Her name was Tina. And so before she could do anything, we opened her eyes and I grabbed her and I said, I have to tell you something. And I told her about how I felt after my second miscarriage. And she, she, her eyes got big and she said, did I tell you that? And I said, no. And she just was like, she just like kind of clutched her chest and she was in disbelief. She said, I am a kindergarten teacher. And ever since I have miscarried, I have beat myself up over and over again about all the times I wasn't perfectly kind to a child in my classroom. And I thought that I did not I was being told by the universe I did not deserve to have children because I wasn't mm-hmm. I wasn't worthy and we both sort of cried and hugged and and I, I mean that's probably my most profound example of that but there have been a number of circumstances where I've been in that space with people of the same sensibilities and the healing that can occur is just profound yeah. It's something that you don't, it's hard to describe unless you experience it until you experience it. Um, that's why I, I really wanted to talk about this. I really wanted to do a podcast about this because there are communities like this everywhere. I, you know, if you read yoga magazines or if you end up getting on these lists, you find they're in California and Colorado and the desert Southwest and, you know, they're, they're, they're mm. all over. Absolutely. So if people are looking Call for them little pods, yes, little pods, right, pods. <laughs> this is our, this is finding, pod. finding your pod, <laughs> finding your pod, your or own mother, pods, right? <laughs> your own mothership. Yeah. 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 And of course the other piece of this is that it does cost money to attend these places. Right. But, mm-hmm. um, I, and I'm more familiar with Kripalu cause I've been there far more. I've only been to Omega twice. I've been to Kripalu maybe a dozen times at this point. Um, but there are, like, they have dormitory uh, rooms you can stay in. They're a lot less expensive than if you have a private room with a private bath. Um, they have scholarships. So mm-hmm. there are ways to, to get this experience mm-hmm. if, you, if you're looking for it. And, you know, um, money is not unlimited. 
uh, for you. Right, and I think I think the Omega Institute has even tent sites. Yes, that's true. That's right. So they do. So, so I mean, camp. these are summer places, obviously, because yeah. they're in the north. <laughs> yeah, cool. Kripalu does but go year round. Omega. But Omega, yeah. yeah, Omega is a fair weather uh, uh, place. But they, but they have a lot of things online now because of the pandemic. So there's thank you so I much available that. online. Yes, yes, because yes. we've done. Some of their some of their um, their courses online. Yes, we have too, which are which are very beneficial. Yep. The, yeah. The the yoga one that we did through Kapalu, the Omega Institute, ancestral one of the healing, healing sessions one. that we yeah ancestral healing that was wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So lots yes. of really great stuff out there. Right. So you can do a weekend training, or sometimes, sometimes I've done one where they have a couple evenings a week for an hour and a half for two weeks. Right. Tuesday Thursday mm -hmm. for two weeks, an hour and a half. So, they, so one of the things about the pandemic is it is making this program more accessible. Doing it virtually means it's harder to make those connections with people, right? And you don't get sure. the experience of the extra yoga classes or all the other things that are available on the campus when you go. But just getting access to the speakers and the information, you absolutely can get um, virtually. Yes. And as you said, we've done it a couple of times. So. Oh, I got sort of emotional there thinking about that experience again. I was like, oh, yeah. breathe, you know, it just, it's. What a gift. It's it, that connection with other people. What a gift. And yeah. we never know. We never oh. know how showing up and being present, how we can be an instrument for someone else's healing or they will be an instrument of healing for us. Yeah. What a, what a great gift. She, she hugged is. me so tight at the end and said, I know God put you right next to me. Right Amazing. next to me. So. Absolutely. so that's why we had to talk about Kripalu and Omega yes. and all the other wonderful pods that are out there, Absolutely. places of healing and compassion and kinship and connection and understanding because we all need that. Yes, we do. And I just have to do give a shout out to the Yoga Nidra. Um, oh, Jennifer Reese. Jennifer Reese, the, so that... Oh my God! It was a regular that was at Kripalu. The, that was yeah. um, that was your one of your birthday gifts to me to yes. take me there for that week, <laughs> and and this was after a serious back injury that I'd been struggling with for three or more years. I can't remember how many years I'd had that just intense stabbing back pain, um, from injured disc. But anyway, that was that was the week that that brought me back to yoga because I I was able to. I was able to do that and it actually that and and oh gosh the gentle yogi Rudy Rudy Pierce is it Pierce I I, I don't know that I know oh, his last I want I want to get guy. the name right He's your guy But yeah he is my guy cuz I I got to share that story um for people that think oh I can't do that yes it's Rudy Pierce um I, I wanted to do, I wanted to have the yoga experience, man. I wanted to do yoga in the morning and the, and the, um, the yoga, at least at, at before bed, I wanted to right. do it twice a day. And so that, that week that we were there for the yoga nidra, or was it a different one? I'm, I'm starting to I think it's when you did your Ayurveda. Sure. Rudy was when okay, you did, did my Ayurveda, Ayurveda training. Yeah. Okay. Did my Ayurveda training. And, and at that time, tra traveling still can be difficult for my low back. Yeah. So I was in, it was like day two or day three of getting there, you know, from traveling. And that's usually my worst day. I was in so much pain. I was having difficulty straightening up all the way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you get up at five or five 30 just to get ready. So you can get down there by 6 AM. Yeah. So I thought, Oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. This is, I'm in too much pain. I'm not gonna be able to move. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm, 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 I'm going, I'm just, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go. Yeah. And if I have to do Shavasana with a pillow under my knees the whole time, I'll which they, do it, which know? they completely encourage with no judgment. Encourage, that's what you feel support, you need. Yeah. That's what you no feel judgment. you need. Yep. So, so I, I went and I thought, okay. And, and I thought, oh crap, it's a man. This is going to, this is going to be really tough. Yeah. You know, I thought he's going to kill us. So I thought, die well, in gentle just, yoga. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to die in gentle yoga here. <laughs> so I sat in the very back, hopefully that nobody would see me. And, um, uh, and he started off and he just had the most peaceful, gentle voice. And I thought, okay, I can sit Indian style sort of, you know, so I, I, I was, I was hurting, but I started, I started following what he was doing and by the end of the class, 
I was lying there and the, you know, the, you have the Shavasana and you have a couple minutes of the peacefulness and, um, I wasn't crying, but tears kept rolling down, you know, my face because the pain was gone ah. at the end of that hour, that just horrible stabbing pain that ran down the back of my legs was gone. And so of course I had to go tell him, you know, at, at the end of class and I was trying to wait cause I was still tearing because yeah. I, I couldn't believe that in an hour's time that the pain could go from just that horrible, intense pain to, I wasn't in any pain. And as I was, you know, waiting for everybody else to tell him how wonderful he was and ask what his <laughs> CDs are and all that. And I'm standing there going, I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. Um, and so I was trying to calm myself down. And by the time I started telling him, I said, I just have to tell you that I almost didn't come because, and I explained about my back injury and the car accidents and all that. And that I said, I was in so much pain. I had trouble walking down here this morning, but I, something told me to come. And I said, I got to tell you that the stabbing pain is gone. And I would never have believed that in an hour's time. That's net that's, that hadn't happened before. And so, um, I just, I said, thank you so much for mm. being here and for sharing this with all of us. And he, he teared up and gave me a big old hug, which of course oh. made me boo, you know, <laughs> and it was just like, what? <laughs> I just, I just, just had to tell you, thank you. I'm going to go now. <laughs> but it just those moments of, of that kind of, that kind of relief and that kind of release and healing is just such a gift for anybody who has been living with chronic pain. It's yeah. Wow. What a yeah. gift. So yeah, all without pharmaceuticals, <laughs> which is yay, you know, a bonus. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so we we highly recommend you check out someplace near you and see what happens. Absolutely. And, Give it a uh, try. You never know what you're going to find. Yeah, follow follow your heart and your intuition. Yeah. It will it will steer you in the right path. Yeah. And when you do, let us know because there might be someplace new we have to go. Oh yes please do. <laughs> yeah. But until then, we are wishing you so much light, so much love. And so many, many, many blessings. Be well all. Yes. Mm -hmm.